my mother's death, seven months after this photo was taken. I spent the summer of 2017 traveling across the country alone, far, far away, figuratively and literally, from my job as a technology and engineering teacher outside of New York City. For two months, I traveled across Route 66, exploring the Great Southwest. And like a timid squirrel, I was scurrying from historic landmark to historic landmark. I was trying to stay undetected, under the radar. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to make friends. I didn't want to hang out. I hiked into the Grand Canyon alone. I marveled at the rusty colors of the land alone. And I slept on a beach under the stars all alone. Along my journey, I met up with my good friend Evan in Santa Fe, New Mexico, 1,800 miles from home. We were exploring an international art fair, and out of nowhere, I turned to him and I said, I'm a shell of myself, deflated like a giant balloon without any air. The next day, Evan and I parted ways, and I was on my own, all alone again. So I was racing down Route 66 with my foot to the floor, country music blasting, and I stuck my head out the window and I screamed, I'm finally alone! All of my wishes had come true. I wanted to scream. I wanted to run. I wanted to be on my own. On a typical morning of this trip, I was up early with the sun rising and out of my camp before many other people were moving about. I was headed into Utah that day. I got a great tip about this hike to see these toadstool rock formations. So I drove there, pulled into the parking lot alone. There was no one else on this hike yet. I had the whole trail to myself. I was excited. So I hiked in, saw the toadstools, marveled at their fascinating balancing act, uh, and decided it was time to turn around and head back to my car. But I didn't know where the trail was. So I started to walk in the direction that I came, and I stepped down two natural stair-like steps, and I was overlooking a much larger jump. I took a picture, and with much contemplation, I jumped. And snap! I heard my ankle shatter. My right foot, which should have been pointing north and south, was pointing east and west. I screamed, no! My life came flashing before my eyes. Everything that I had wished for was ruined. Everything that I worked for was ruined. My life as I knew it was ruined. But I knew I had to get out. The day was going to get hot. I didn't have any food. I didn't have enough water. So I did what I had to do. I started to crawl crawl by crawl on my hands and knees. I crawled for about half a mile, 30 minutes. My knees were caked with sand, blood, and gravel. I was crawling all alone. Surely I was going to die if I didn't keep going. After much crawling, I heard some shuffling of people above me, and I called out to them, help! And a generous couple from Mexico came down to help. They took turns carrying me on their back to the car and drove me to the nearest hospital. From the parking lot, I looked back at how far I came. It was an eternity. But little by little, crawl by crawl, I made enough progress to save my ankle and my life. As you can imagine, getting from where I was to where I needed to be was brutal, but I kept crawling all alone all while searching for others to help. I, Miss Independent, who insisted on my own peace and quiet, my own independence, in a moment of despair, was desperately searching for others to help. Shortly after, I was informed that my ankle was broken pretty badly, and it would require a lot of time, a lot of resources, and a lot of selfless people to help me stand back up walk, and eventually run again. But I knew that if I kept going like I had in the desert, I would be okay. Little by little, 
crawl by crawl, stranger by stranger, friend by friend, family by family. Eventually, I would stand back up and run again. In just eight short weeks after surgery, 13 screws, a giant metal plate, rehab and training, I was living alone in a walk-up building in New York City and running again. <laughs> but on the road to recovery, not everything was put back together. I still felt lost and alone. Just like I had told Evan a couple of months earlier, I still felt deflated, like a giant balloon without any air. And it turns out that's how many of us live our lives every day. Shells of what we can be, deflated like giant balloons without any air. And in order for me to come alive again, I needed to connect with others. But to be honest, I was emotionally and psychologically barren before I went into that desert. My lifelong passion for teaching wasn't serving its purpose. My friendships were shallow. My family was frustrating me. And I didn't want to live this way. I wanted more out of my life. And then the desert nearly killed me for real. And when my ankle snapped, I guess you can say something inside of me snapped too. Some people call this an aha moment, an epiphany even. I call it my literal rock bottom. And it would take a lot of time for me to get back to where I was. While I was alone in that desert for many hours, I didn't really accomplish much without the help of others. I'm going to tell you some stories about people that helped. While I was in Lake Powell, a lovely family from California helped me pitch my tent on a windy beach. It didn't stay up, but they helped nonetheless. Another evening, a lovely man from Canada taught me how to start a fire and hang my food so the bears wouldn't get it. One afternoon, uh, some indigenous tour guides from the Leche tribe blessed me before showing me the Antelope Canyons on their land. And while I was hiking into the Grand Canyon, two women stopped me to take my picture and point out the rainbow I would have otherwise not noticed. Crawling all alone in that desert taught me many valuable life lessons. But most importantly, it taught me that when push comes to shove, we shouldn't and probably, be, and probably can't be successful alone. When I stop and think about it, all that time I spent alone in the desert, I got by with the help of others. So five years ago, one year after I broke my ankle in the desert, I started my own company, Ymaker. It's my own business to train educators on how to teach STEM, design thinking, and project-based learning. And, my, and although my journey through entrepreneurship is nothing like my journey through the desert, in many ways, it's exactly the same. And I wanted to do this all alone. But just like pitching my tent or hanging my food, I needed help from others. So over the past five years, Ymaker has grown employee by employee to be dedicated to empowering educators to design the future of education. We are now a team of 10 women who live all over the world, who re rely on each other every day. We are like-minded in our empathy over the current rock-bottom state of education. We have learned that educators often feel lost and alone, and we are there to support them. Educators and students do not, cannot be successful by being alone. Educators want to close their classroom doors, shut out the outside world, and I know from experience that we cannot go anywhere alone. So I now work passionately to support educators to excite and provide the best education possible to their students. I am now the one who carries educators on my back through their educational journey in the desert. 
When I stop and think about what I have built, Ymaker is the robust support network that educators deserve to be attended to so they never feel alone. We are social creatures. We require each other to grow, connect, and to thrive. And we need each other to raise a generation of kind, compassionate, and high-functioning young adults as well. My journey through the desert was unique, but all of us experience loss, emotional deserts, and rock bottoms in our life. For me, writing about it in my book, Surfing on Rocks, was cathartic and helped me realize that we thrive with the help of others. Thank you.